Hey everyone, Chaos Tuned here. Um, just wanted to make a quick video before we head into the weekend um, and talk a little bit more about our uh, nitrous throttle body plate here. And hopefully, uh, as I go through it, it might answer some uh, of your questions. I've seen a lot of questions. There's lots of discussion, and we like that. That's great. Thanks for your input. Um, so let me tell you a little bit more about how this thing works. Um, first off, we want it to function well. So um, I'm going to zoom in here and we're going to have a look at where the fuel and the nitrous is introduced into the airflow. So you'll see these small holes uh, drilled here at the bottom of the bore. Um, I've kind of modeled here just for a visual representation what it would look like when the fuel by itself enters the airflow. So. Um, I won't bore you. I, I did a rough uh, figuring of how fast the air is moving through a throttle body of this size given an engine displacement and uh, a volumetric efficiency of that engine at a certain RPM. And uh, nominally speaking, it's about 60 miles an hour. Okay, That's going to vary a lot, but I just wanted to uh, kind of help illustrate something for you. So if you have these little streams of fuel, the pressure that they're entering this airflow at is whatever your base fuel pressure is. And so if you uh, think about that, that's, you know, maybe 50 PSI, okay? If you have a 50 PSI stream of fuel, this is a, a, a pretty small hole here. This is uh, 48 mils. Um, that fuel, as soon as it is sheared by the direction of the incoming airflow it is pushed backwards along with it and if we bring in the second row of jets so right behind those is where the nitrous uh, is introduced into the airflow and what it does is it will entrain and essentially obliterate that fuel uh, causing it to atomize. So the nitrous is coming uh, out here in liquid form, but as soon as it enters the air, it expands uh, and turns uh, into a gaseous state. And the process of doing that, um, there's lots of pressure and velocity. The velocity of the nitrous jet is very high. Um, and so the combination of having the fuel injected right in front of that and then the fuel stream getting hit by that jet of nitrous uh, causes uh, atomization to occur. Now there's lots of discussion had uh, and the points are very valid. Uh, I don't have any data to show otherwise but we intend to do the testing on it um, and that that pertains to well how well does it mix and how well does it distribute to each cylinder. So um, we have, uh, we are currently working on uh, getting a development car uh, here to work with, and uh, when we have our plate made, uh, our concept plate, uh, we'll be installing it on that car, and we will also install uh, dedicated O2 sensors to each exhaust runner, uh, and we will log air fuel ratio over the entire RPM range. Uh, and then we will also do that for different uh, shots. So, you know, a small shot, relatively speaking, uh, maybe we don't see any variation uh, in distribution to each cylinder, but as the shot is increased, maybe we do. Again, it's all speculation at this point. I, I don't have any data to say otherwise, um, but we intend to collect the data, and we will share all of that with you guys. Um, so we'll see what we find out. Um, I'm going to hide this just for a minute. So the plate itself, we have the solenoids built in. And what that does, uh, as far as installation goes, is it, it makes the, the installed footprint much smaller. Um, fittings, as you can see here, they're rigid. Uh, and the connections to them, usually you know, the flex line, uh, also has uh, at the end of it a portion which is not flexible yet and it just uh, so you if you if you're limited on space which uh, 
you know, we're trying to design something as compact as possible here. So uh, this this way of doing it, where we integrate the solenoid into the plate, eliminates the output fitting uh, in the system. The output from the solenoid is in the plate, so there's not an additional fitting that you have to mess with. Um, I've uh, been asked, well, how do you tune your shot? So um, these fittings here, it's a, it's an NPT uh, thread uh, into the plate, and then AN, it's a, and it's a modified fitting. Um, and what you do is there are these brass orifices. It's a precision brass orifice. And these are available with different diameter uh, orifices. And so um, all you do to change your uh, tuning on this is you disconnect the fitting here, drop the brass fitting out, swap it with uh, you know whether you need to go up or down uh, depending on uh, what you see on the dyno. Um, you change the brass fitting uh, to accomplish that. It's much easier to do this uh, very quickly. It's a very quick thing to do. Um, I think the um, you know the direct port uh, uh, fogger setups with the hard lines. It it's, it takes a bit of effort to change jets, and so um, this way of doing it definitely makes that job you know much easier. Now let me. So how do we actually route this stuff? So if I open this, so this is the plate. And let's just make it a little bit transparent. So follow with me here. This bore, this is for the inlet uh, fitting. And there are some cross boring uh, operations that happen here to allow that to come into the uh, solenoid valve chamber. When the solenoid is actuated, the flow is allowed to, to pass down through this hole where you can see we have drilled again through the plate up and it intersects with another bore which is cross drilled from this side of the plate so you can see there's two bores that run parallel here the first again is for the fuel the second is for the nitrous and so that's how the connection from inlet to these uh, you know, injection jets, you know, at the at the throttle body is being done. Now these bores <coughs> will be plugged um, after they're made. Uh, obviously, if the if the hole's not plugged, then the whole thing's not going to work. But it's a pressed fit plug, and then the perimeter of this piece is uh, finish machined after that plug is inserted and then anodizing happens after that. So you won't see these uh, holes here. They will be uh, more or less undistinguishable uh, in the final product. But they are necessary uh, so that we can uh, provide a, a route for the fuel and the nitrous to make its way up to the uh, injection point. Um, another question I had uh, asked fairly often was <clears throat> if a solenoid fails can I replace it or do I have to buy a whole nother plate and the answer to that is yes you can replace the solenoids and no you will not have to buy another plate the uh, portion of the solenoid that we're talking about is called the uh, operator that's what the the manufacturer refers to that portion of the solenoid valve as and the operator will be a replacement piece um, so no, you, it's not like your whole plate is shot when, when uh, your solenoid fails. So again, installed is just uh, at the throttle body. You're going to have a loom for uh, power to each solenoid. And then there's one fitting here for nitrous feed and fuel feed. Tuning of those feeds happens with the brass orifice right at that fitting. Um, and overall, it, it offers a very... Uh, compact uh, installed footprint and something that you can tune very quickly um, but you know have, being able to access the jets like that um, 
is is nice. So anyway, that's about it. I'm sure there'll be more questions. Feel free to post those questions below this video. We will be watching it. Um, and until next time, you all have a good weekend.